The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Toku Talk. Today, Argus and Jacob here, we will be discussing Power Rangers villains. Yes! And this was a suggestion from someone? Yes, this is a suggestion from Mr. X on our Discord. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Now, what in particular about the villains will we be discussing? We're going to talk about some of those original villains that mm. they did not bring over from Super Sentai. They added on their own. And how they affected the story, because in a lot of cases, uh, actually a good portion of the cases, there's a good chance that the uh, story will be somewhat similar. Mm. Until you get to, like, now. So, <laughs> I will need your help refreshing my memory, because it's been a minute. But yeah. Who, who would you like to start with? Should we start with Lord Zed? Yes, we should start with Lord Zed. Because I think Z. he's the big one. And he showed up again. He did? In Dino Fury. Oh, jeez. And he's probably going to be the main villain in Cosmic Fury with the Q-Ranger suit. Hmm. So. He just can't keep a good Zed down, I guess. No, but they should have <laughs> because they forgot their own goddamn continuity. Oh, but at the well. same time, they said, it's not the same Zed. It's just him when he was at his worst. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Pluck him out of the timeline from when he's the most evil. Yeah. Zed in season two, man. Dude was terrifying. And that scared the kids. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what to do. Now, it's a, sort of a weird thing talking about MPR for those first three seasons because they're Kitbosh seasons. And they didn't bring over everything. Yeah. They brought over none of the villains from Die Ranger. So they replaced them. One of whom was later used for uh, Wild Force. Force. Yeah. King Gorm of the 14th. They used his suit for uh, Master Org, who we'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, Lord Zed, at least when he first came in, he was a much more threatening villain. Mm -hmm. He used his appearance, you know, was just muscle and brain. I gotta say, like, even as a kid, loved that design. It's a great design. It's just, it's just such a metal design. Just like sinewy muscles with like... The metal rib cage and the red, the giant red eyes, Z on his head. He looks great, and you know it, we would be remiss if we didn't say, you know, rest in peace, Robert Axelrod, the it was the actor who who brought that voice to life. Because Zed, I mean, one of the things that you do remember the most about a lot of these is their voice. A, a lot of these Power Ranger villains. I mean, you think about Goldar, and you think about oh goodness, I'm gonna kill those Dickledorks. And then you got, you know, Rita with her with her screech, that wonderful screech that uh, I believe it was Barbara Goodson. Yes. Did the voice did the voice. Coming back for the anniversary. Which is cool. And uh, and then you had, you know, Lord Zed, Robert Axelrod, the sworn enemy of all that is good and decent. And it was great. It, it was it was, you know, the, the, every villain had a distinct enough voice that as a kid you can point to and be like, oh yeah, they're a bad guy. His design <laughs> Especially now that I think about it, super nineties, super like hardcore nineties. It is, it is like if it's like it's the carnage to vet to the venom of Rita Repulsa. It's like this is the this is the edgier, more metal version of the of the villains that have come before. Lobo and the Punisher, <laughs> all those heavy metal, dude. <laughs> uh, that was a Ninja Turtles villain, I believe. Metal was it heavy metal or metalhead? The robot turtle. One of the two. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I, I think Zed... At least His 90s his... voice was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. I tried to be there because he knows totally too clear and everything. <laughs> Dude. Um, uh. <laughs> I don't miss it. I miss the commercials, but I don't miss anything else. <laughs> Let's oh see. god, purple that could stuff. <laughs> no purple, water. orange, so cola. Oh, oh Sonic D. <laughs> god, god damn it, damn it. The nineties were a wild time. You oh. had to be there. Um, <laughs> you had to be there, folks. But yeah, it might be for the best that you didn't. Yeah, but Zed, at least for season two, was just sort of terrifying, and that's sort of the point. Then. Parents, and then season three happened where he got married to Rita, and that was just they toned him down significantly. And it was for the detriment of the character because even though they brought in Master Bao mm -hmm. from Cocker Ranger, it was just you still had Zed there as pretty much the primary villain, mm -hmm. even with Rita still there, uh, being a new villain because Junior got exceedingly toned down as her brother, mm -hmm. just an idiot, unlike <laughs> what he was in Cocker Ranger, where he was that Junior was actually really threatening. 
Mm. Um, so was Master Val, although he was a little bit more comedic as well. Uh, they didn't really do another like completely original villain until well, Dematots. One of your favorites. I do love a queen. <laughs> I really do. She's funny. She's sassy. She puts bombs and puts timers way too long on them. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to confuse her with Astronema. No, because Astronema was next. Yes. Was Astronema original? Yes. They I, sort of yeah. had a... Both of them sort of had a basis on the character. At least for mm-hmm. Diva Talks, they had a basis on um, the girl from Car Ranger. I think her name was Zonette, who fell in love with Red Racer. Yeah. Yeah. And Astronema that. was based on... Like, she was sort of an amalgamation of uh, the head scientist Mm -hmm. and Mabushina Mm -hmm. from uh, Mega Ranger. But Astronema, I love her because of the ham. She was a ham. Just all the ham, best cuts, country ham just full of salt. Mm. (laughs) But I love Astronema. Which one was Ow, Rita? That was uh, Diva Talks. That was Diva Talks. Who Who was Destroy Them? Yeah. Was that also Diva Talks or was no, that? No, that was Astronomer. That was Astronomer, okay. But they were... Don't want, to get any, don't, don't want to get any wires crossed. For better or for worse, especially because it's around this area before we get to Trakina. Um, at least for those two in Zed in Season 2, they really added something mm-hmm. to the shows that weren't necessarily present in their Super Sentai incarnations. Mm. Astronomer added, you know, there was a personal connection between her and Andros. So it's like they could do a lot more with that story and make it a lot more interesting to watch as a melodrama. Diva Talks was just entertaining. Mm-hmm. Zed was scary. And, you know, then they got bad when season three happened. Mm. But at least they added something for the show's proper. I believe for Trakina, as we went to Lost Galaxy, mm-hmm. they it also helped there. As we know, I'm not the biggest fan of Gingaman. But I do actually like Lost Galaxy better because I like the characters a lot more. Mm-hmm. I actually really like Trakina and the things that she did with Villamax uh, as her trainer and mm-hmm. the whole thing with her dad. I just think they betrayed her character a little bit at the end. Mm. Actually, a lot of it. How so? Because they combined her with the metal guy and just made her like super evil and crazy. Mm. Like at least with Astronomer, it was basically just a reprogramming and implanting cybernetic parts into her head. So she became a lot colder and you know, Ecliptor's relationship with her and all of that. Mm-hmm. But here with Trakina, it just felt like it, it felt a little mean in some cases because Trakina had a lot of growth as a character and then it just made her sort of basic where she just wanted to destroy everything because she got combined with this guy. Mm-hmm. It did more things for Villamex's character because he was like the honorable bad guy and he tried to protect that girl and uh, helped her get back to her mother at the end before Trakina just kills him. So I think it honestly helped in some cases, but it, de- it was to the detriment of Trakina's character for the show in comparison to some of the things that they did from Ginga Man. Mm. I just think they did it honestly better here in Lost Galaxy because I had no com- emotional connection to Ginga Man like some people do. Fair enough. Also, I just don't think the villains of Ginga Man were that great. <laughs> A lot of things about Ginga Man weren't great. It's also true. So I've been told. Uh, Lost Galaxy, <laughs> nothing really got added there. They just removed the familiar connection, which I think was a bad thing. Mm. For Lightspeed, I mean. Lightspeed Rescue. Yeah. Uh, there are two... There are three big ones here coming up. I think I know what four. one of them is going to be. There's a good four here. Okay. Ranzik. Ranzik. Uh, Mezagog. Ranzik, Mezagog, Lothor. From uh, Ninja Storm. Yeah. Master Org. From Wild Force. Yeah, those are sort of the big ones. Mm. And we'll start with Rancic here. Rancic adds a lot to the story because it makes the personal connection of what happened in the future have a face mm. to a character. It's not yes. just uh, the Dawn who got converted to another character from mm. Time Force, from uh, Time Ranger. It was. Rancic was in this show powerful as hell mm. he proved that great actor yes great actor i mean if if zed is that 90s edge that would not look at all out of place as a todd mcfarlane toy yeah then this guy is 2000s edge like early 2000s, early 2000s edge. edge 
he would he does not look like he would be out of place at all as like a backup drummer at a Guar concert. It's true. Just, I mean, to be fair, the actor was in Mad Max. So it's good for him. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. He was in that before uh, uh, Time Force. So. Yeah. And they even did that in an episode where they had like a Mad Max moment with him in the car just swinging a chain. <laughs> what? That's me. Do it. <laughs> but yeah, I really just enjoyed everything that Renzi brought to Time Force specifically. I think they did his character a little bit of a disservice in Wild Force, but that's neither here nor there. Mm. I do think that they did his character a lot better than the character from uh, Time Ranger, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least for the villains, because Nadir and everybody else are pretty much the same. Even Frax, and I think Frax is obviously a real standout for this. Mm. But I just think that Rancic brought something that the Dawn from Time Ranger could not. Mm. Moving on. Master Org. Master Org. Another really good personal connection. Yes. And I think they, I think he has one of the better backstories. Agreed. Of uh, Power Rangers original villains. Yeah. Master Orc was great. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's because his, the root of his whole thing was really petty and bitter and rooted in jealousy. Someone who was spurned, a lover yeah. spurned. I think that really helped him in comparison to his, I guess, counterparts. Mm-hmm. From, uh, uh, from Die Ranger. From Gow Ranger, <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the name. It took me a second. But, Die Ranger slash Gal Ranger. Yeah, I, I think that actually made him a lot more compelling to watch as a character. Because mm. we said this multiple times before. We think that Gal Ranger is boring as hell. It is. But, <laughs> but I think for Wild Force, something that really brings it over for me, especially mm-hmm. just as a whole, is really just Master Ward. Mm. And how much he despised Cole because he was just the amalgamation of everything that he hated. The amalgamation of everything that he hated and how you really get a sense of how the evil power was able to corrupt him over time yeah. and how the dark side, you know, just eventually just grew and grew until he became a monster. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, re- really good villain. I think one of the better ones in power Rangers. Then we swing back. <laughs> we talk about Lothor next. I hate Lothor with the fiery passion of a thousand burning suns. Yeah. Lothor is one of those ones where it's like, how did it take this long for anyone to beat you? Yeah. Like I get that he was, strong. I feel like the fish in the office fish tank could have taken this guy out. Like I get that mm-hmm. he was strong. But it's personality that really is to the detriment of his character. Yeah, he's an incompetent doof. I understand that he was also played by the guy who played the master for the actual team. And he was Cam's uncle. Mm-hmm. But Lothor himself, and I love Cam. I think Cam is so good entertainment-wise. He just felt dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, like there, There's a fine line. He crossed it. About two years back. <laughs> it just didn't work. Go. Like, I know that Hurricane just didn't really have, like, a main central villain. I mean, it did, but they were all awful. Yeah, they were It had great. some of the worst villains in Sentai. Some of the best rangers, some of the worst villains. But True on both counts. Yeah. Mm. I, I just don't think they did it that well. And, yeah. Lothar was just not a great character to me. Mm. And then we swing back the other way for the most part. And then we swing Mexico. back the other way for a dinosaur. Dinosaur. Terrifying dinosaur man. Hmm. He has great design. Great design. The voice. Mm. The voice. So much gravitas and menace. Mm. In that voice, man. I love Mesagog. And I, I don't think there's really a change here that's bad. Because Abba Ranger tells such a different story hmm. than uh, Dino Thunder does. And, but it's such a, like, for this particular one, they did something wholly original and it really worked. Hmm. Latham, uh, Latham Gaines is the actor who played him. Is he also the voice actor? Um, he's the only one listed. Oh. Huh? Well, that was a great job. Because mm-hmm. I know he's the face actor. But yeah, I just think he was just really well done, especially as, you know, Anton Mercer. The only thing that really hurt Mezikov was just the ending where he became Monster. Hmm. Monster Man. Uh, Grom. I... From... SPD. Okay. I do not like Grom in any shape, form, or capacity. I think he's unnecessary. 
Hmm. Like, I understand that with even like a, you know, inter, uh, interstellar police force like SPD and Decker Ranger, um, that there could be like an empire or something far off mm-hmm. in even unknown or uncharted space that they have not gotten to is going to come in and like try to take over. Mm-hmm. I just think that it did not help SPD in any shape, form, or fashion to have a centralized villain. Okay. That if anything, if they wanted to have a central villain, it could have just been Broodwing, who played Agent Abrera and Deckard. Okay. Where he was just like the benefactor for everybody. I think that would have honestly worked better in, instead of just having Emperor Matt. It's been a been a been a bit since I have seen Decker Ranger. Uh, sorry, in space. SPD. SPD. So many titles to confuse. Uh, so I don't really remember him much. And the, so the, the magnificent. So I don't, so I don't really just, have much to say. The magnificent. He was a brain on the floor. Stabbed the brain, didn't you? Pretty much. <laughs> It should have did that. It would have saved us a lot of time and or energy. But the brain yeah, itself feels no pain, Clarice. I just don't think it was a good idea to do that. And I think if they would have just had, you know, A Squad wasn't brainwashed; they were just turned bad. I think if they would have gotten, uh, I guess, tempted by crime and money, that would have been a little bit more interesting than just we're bad now. <laughs> We we got tempted by bad by uh crime and money by this guy and we have power. I think just having power instead of just doing it for specifically, I think greed is a much more uh interesting motivator than just plain power, at least to me. Because at least with greed is like all right, there's sort of like an end goal here. Mm. Just like I have money and I want to keep having money. I want more money. With power, it's just like yeah, I'm going to have power, but eventually it gets stale. unlimited power. It gets stale, and it gets stale sort of quick, and I don't like that. I think power is just not that interesting as a thing that you want, because somebody eventually will come and overtake you. Mm. With money, you can pretty much stop, but you just keep going for nothing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who is our next original? Oh, no. Okay. Furious from Operation Overdrive. Amongst everything else that's wrong in that show. Was he the snowman? Yes. Oh, boy. And... A snowman, I mean, like, abominable snowman. No, he was the guy who was, like, all ice, and his he brother was... was a lava one, but he had the abominable snowman, like... Right, him. right, right, right. So, Flurious, what about what about him? No. <laughs> no? Okay, shall we move on? Yeah. Okay, who's next? He was bad. <laughs> he was very bad. Like a lot of things in Operation Overdrive. Just terrible. Okay. For the next one, it's sort of weird because Daishi himself was... Original, hmm. the character could, like technically completely wasn't because it was just long. Uh, not being there, mm. they didn't have long in Jungle Fury. Mm. It was just Dai Shi like manipulating Jared the entire time. But long as a villain, we talked about long pretty much ad nauseum on this channel before because we love him. Mm. It's just Dai Shi. I don't think is that interesting mm-hmm. because. It's, he's just a bad influence, but he's not really doing anything because it's still basically Jared's still doing everything. It's just that Daishi sort of push. Mm. With Long, though, Long was doing everything behind the scenes, manipulating everybody. <laughs> and I, I think that's the thing that they sort of miss on the villain side in Jungle Fury. Like, I think Jungle Fury is on the whole a good season, but it was just some things that didn't mesh as well. It's like they you made, needed more of that manipulation. Yeah, because more, more of that scheming behind the scenes, so, scenes of him in the lair, bunch of, looking at maybe a bunch of monitors or something, going yeah, stroking a cat. Yes, all according to plan. And then eating that cat because he is a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just like they weirdly enough did sort of the opposite that Gecko Ranger did, where they made the characters a lot more, like the main five, a lot more interesting to watch in Jungle Fury. Mm-hmm. But for Geki Ranger, the villains were the focus. Mm. <laughs> so it's like they sort of switched back and forth on the two. And I was just like, eh. <laughs> Notification popped up on the computer. Yeah. So what comes out? Oh, Vengex. Mr. Vengex. Yes. <laughs> he won. <laughs> yeah, Vengex won. 
And uh, Vengeance, it's like, you know, the, the, the monster and the one who created it. And that dichotomy there. Yeah. And I think it was used very well. Yeah. The, uh, again, again, uh, cause the only time we've ever really seen that in Sentai was Q Ranger. Yeah. Where we had, uh, the galactic empire that had already conquered most of the known galaxy. And now we have our small little resistance force fighting back against them. Yeah. Very much different from, uh, uh, from what was that? Go on, go on, yeah, where I comedy the Sentai. It was, it was, it was an attempt at comedy, an attempt was made, but also it was they were an outside force that was invading as opposed to something that sprung up from the inside, yeah. I just, done very well, I think. Yeah, RBM just did what they wanted to do very well with the, you know, pretty intricate villain who didn't take any shit from anybody. Mm-hmm. He just kept destroying people. And if he didn't work, well, good luck. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, This is where my thing started to get a little murky. Mm-hmm. Um, I know who I want to talk about. Sledge? No. Oh, because he was next. Oh, well, we can talk about him. Sledge was good. <laughs> Who's was Sledge from? Dino Charge. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, he was the main villain from Dino Charge. If you say so. <laughs> uh, I think Sledge was... I think Sledge was what Lothor wanted to be. Okay, how so? He was... You know, he had the comedy because he had... It, it was like a combination of what... Uh, season 3, Zen Rita, and Lothor wanted to be. Where he had the comedy. He, he had the fiancé in this case. Hmm. Then he kept pushing off the wedding. <laughs> because he's just like... Because okay, he has to destroy the Power Rangers. Yeah, he has to get all the energy gems and things back first. But I think Sledge was just an entertaining villain. Like, he was entertaining, but he was still strong. Like, they really didn't show that that much with Lothor until really near the end of Ninja Storm. And mostly the the one that comes to mind for me was the uh, Dino Thunder Ninja Storm crossover. Where he and Mezagog had that fight in the lab before he lost. Because Mezagog turned into a toy. <laughs> <laughs> but Sledge was fun. I think he worked better than the ones from uh, Kyoryuger in all honesty. But I don't really like Kyoryuger that much. So I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> Same. But anyway. Moving on to... Wouldn't it be Madame Odious next from Ninja Steel? No. Ugh. No, because this is when they started splicing. This is when we got like some of the Tokyo Yuji villains just showing up with different faces. Yeah. Uh would um because the ones that I would I don't know if they count, but Roxy and Blaze, would they count? From Beast Morphers. From Beast Morphers. That's who I would want to talk about next because they were great. Well they but they also have sort of a dick direct counterpart. Kind of with Enter and Escape, but they're I feel like they're so different in terms of how they make the story. Yeah. Their connections to the Rangers. Evox, especially with that. Mm-hmm. But um, I also just love I also just love this too, especially Roxy. Yeah. I, you- I said this in our in comparison. She it might be one of the best performances in Power Rangers. I think she was I think she was the best actor in that show. She was fantastic. They should have did more with the two of them in season two with their cyborg things, but no nope, yeah, but even their regular ones. They didn't do anything with them. You do what you gotta. Like you could have got some original rangers there and I've been like, Now okay. there there are uh, if that's it for the shows that we're gonna talk about, there are two that I would like to bring up as well. Uh, and we'd have to go back in time for them. There is I think Dino Fury. That's not who I was gonna talk about, but She's there, she's the queen, she's like Pink's mother. And now pink is now red in Cosmic Fury. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Well, I don't think we can bring up original villains in Power Rangers without talking about Ladies and gentlemen, the ooze is back. Ivan Ooze. Well, the reason I, I think bring... Ivan Ooze definitely deserves a spot for us to talk about because the, the reason I didn't bring him up is because he was just a movie. And he was just a movie, but still, he's an original Power Rangers villain. Yeah, but there was... Like, <laughs> because of the fact that he just get referenced. It was just in that movie, and it never brought him again. That's okay with me. He, the movie was all he needed to exist for. He was a threat that, you know, showed up, and he was even more powerful than the villains that we had at this point. And ju- just the way he came in, cleaned house, he had that delightfully... Hammy performance uh, by, uh, I'm freezing on the actor's name. It's the actor who played Belloc from Raiders of the Lost Ark. But um, I, I love that performance. I love his look. It's just, 
so appropriately deliciously 90s cheese. Just, it was. Just, just a big vat of like molten golden cheese that you're just going to use as a as a delivery device with your nachos. It was just nom 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 I want all of it. Once again, <laughs> Pete, 90s. Mm-hmm. He was Gak. You remember Gak? No, was he Gak or was he Flom? He was Flummer. <laughs> No, I think I think Gak is I think Gak is the better one. Yeah, <laughs> Flom had the beads in it. Oh yeah. So he was he was Gak. You were right. That's uh, your new ASMR channel on YouTube now, where they do all pretty much just make Flom with slime. Yeah, that was something my parents never bought for me. Because <laughs> you're was... just gonna make a mess in the house. You are not yeah, getting that. Yeah, yeah, they knew better. <laughs> my parents were smart. They were very <sighs> smart because mine were too. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't stop me from wanting to play with it just because it looked cool. It looked like I wanted to touch it. Yes. Touch the thing that you shouldn't... The forbidden substance. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ivan Ooze is great, and I also want to mention Elizabeth Banks' Rita Repulsa. Oh, uh, yeah. From Power Rangers 2017. Yeah. Because I think she was one of the better parts of that movie. I would also agree. It helps that I just saw her as Avery on 30 Rock last night. Because oh. I watched a couple of episodes. She's also got a movie that she's directed coming out soon. She does. She Cocaine is a... Cocaine Bear. She I'm is going awesome. to see that. It looks insane. It looks good. Uh, I really do like Elizabeth Banks. And I think she's just a great villain or great actress. Hmm. She's, she's hilarious. She always brings a little bit of camp to each of her roles. This was, de- I mean, definitely, she, she did her homework. Yeah, she did the research and saw like, okay, this is the kind of character I'm playing, and she was, you know, appropriately hammy but still menacing when she needed to be. New look that I thought looked really good for the for the movie that they were trying to build. Yeah, good stuff. I think it deserves a mention. But I think that would do it. Yeah, like I said, can't really talk about Adam Fury because I'm not watching Power Rangers anymore. Really, uh, we'll I mean, see what happens. I mean, after, same. We'll see what happens after Cosmic Fury, but um, yeah. Let us know what you think about the original PR villains in the comments below. Please do. Don't forget to join us all the things. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.